on that same note, Chris, you know, there, we're waiting to see what's going to happen with Rasheed Rice, the Chiefs receiver. Yeah. There was a, an item in the Dallas Morning News over the weekend that charges may be coming soon. You've got the street racing component with injury, which has potentially two to ten years. And we always hear the worst case scenario. It always ends up less than that, but there's still a potential criminal punishment there. You've got leaving the scene of the accident with injury. You've got civil responsibility. You've got potential suspension by the NFL under the personal conduct policy. So there's still more to come. We, we at least know that Rasheed Rice was driving. We know that now. We still don't know why he left the scene. They found a small amount of marijuana in the Lamborghini. And I mean, in most jurisdictions now, who the hell cares? In Texas, it's still illegal. But I mean, who the hell cares about less than an ounce of marijuana being found in a car? The bigger issue is the racing and leaving the scene. And there will be a consequence. We'll, we'll just wait and see how it's all processed. And I think it was smart for him to pivot toward, I accept full responsibility for everything, because his best chance for not not a great outcome, but the best outcome yeah. is to be contrite, truly contrite, yep. and take responsibility and not fight it. That's right. You don't need that. And the Chiefs don't want that. The NFL doesn't want that. They don't want to be made, you know, a spectacle. And then what, what you find out you're lying, they're going to come down even harder on you, both, both sides there. So that's where you got to be careful. Good for him for admitting it, coming out, doing that. You know, as I think I said to you on a text on Saturday or whatever, you know, that's a risky thing by all due accounts watching that video. Yes, we saw it looked like he jumped over, you know, the middle pass. I mean, the, the middle console from the driver's seat, you know, getting out of this Lamborghini SUV. So we kind of put that together, let alone, Mike, I always like, I think I sent to you on text, like, uh, you know, I here in, in, in the Northeast, right. You have like the easy pass lanes, the old toll booths, right. There's cameras there. Like I would think somewhere on a highway, the Dallas police has a camera where they could maybe get a picture that could kind of piece together. Like, Ooh, it looks like the guy wearing all black is driving the car and in the driver's seat. So you got to be careful about stuff like that too. Uh, but uh, I, I, listen, this is the first right step uh, as far as is trying to correct the situation, and we'll see where it goes from there. He was in checkmate. Bottom definitely line. right from the That's video right. yeah. that we've shown and tried to kind of supruder it right. to a commonsensical solution to your idea that there are other cameras out there. Cameras are everywhere now. Yeah. Without all this stuff, you wonder. You wonder. Thirty years ago, you wonder. Right. How this would have been resolved, right. and if they would have conclusively known he was driving, and if everybody just would have exercised their right to remain silent, and there never would have been full consequences. I think the bottom line is, he was in checkmate. He took some time to accept the fact that he was in checkmate. He considered whether he had any other potential moves. He realized he didn't. The only move at that point is to declare defeat and and hope that you get lenience, hope that you get some degree of of you know, favorable treatment by showing remorse and contrition, and hopefully it's real and not strategic. We'll see how it plays out. But uh, the Chiefs need to be thinking about how, and, and who knows? Again, you hear these uh, two to ten. We've been, you know, oh, oh, he can face up to ten years. Yeah, what's he going to get? Ten days at the most, if that. House arrest on weekends. I mean, so. But what will happen but, the but NFL way? What do you think? I mean, is, is uh, are we looking at a thing where the, he gets suspended four games? Is it going to be that, that type of thing? Is this incident warrant that type of you know penalty there in, in the in the whole bylaws in the NFL, Mike? What do you think there? First offense DUI is a two-game suspension now, barring circumstances that could cause it to go up or down. But the baseline is two. There isn't a specific formula for this type of thing, this extreme right. street racing, leaving the scene of an accident. But I would just say the mere fact that a DUI, even if there's nobody around, it's a checkpoint. There's no accident. There's no speeding. There's no violation of the rules of the road other than the fact that you're behind the wheel when you shouldn't be. If that gets you two games, this has to at least get you two, at least get you two, if not four. The question is, does it get processed before the start of this season or does it linger? But I yeah. think there's enough there. I think this all gets buttoned up and I think there will be a suspension. If he's not in prison, there will be a suspension and uh, we won't see him my guess would be we're not going to see him to start the season. The question is, is it two? Is it four? Is it longer? This is one of those. And, and this kind of bothers me because, like, he got lucky that nobody got killed. Yeah. Obviously, if somebody would have gotten killed, he'd be out for the whole year. 
And I look at it and I say, and I'm not advocating to be suspended for a whole year. It's just odd to me that the punishment is driven by the outcome. When the behavior is the thing we're trying to deter, we don't want others to do this same thing because it could kill somebody. So when the behavior is something that pulls onto the radar screen the possibility of killing someone, shouldn't the punishment reflect that? Because we're trying to keep people from doing that. Because you'll still do that and say, maybe I'll get lucky and nobody will get killed. No, somebody can still get killed. And we're only going to come down on the hard on the person when someone gets killed. My point is, if it's the behavior you're trying to stop that could lead to somebody getting killed, why is the punishment lesser if somebody doesn't get killed? Does that make any sense at no, all? No, I, I hear you. You're, I mean, I know what you're saying. Right. I mean, it, you know, hey, it, it, it's just a flip of the coin that someone didn't get killed there. Right. I mean, it, it is. And, and of course, yeah, driving fast and doing all that. Hey, we had Henry Ruggs not, you know, a few years ago in that situation. The NFL doesn't want that. Of course, nobody wants that. Nobody. You know, but yeah, it's it's a tough one because you go, wait, wait, that was reckless. That's crazy. You could have killed somebody. But at the same time, right, like we've all been young and dumb. All right. We might not have been that crazy right there. I'm not trying to say that. Right. I, I mean, I was crazy. Don't get me wrong. But like driving on the shoulder, you know, as I'm going 100 and trying like I wasn't that crazy. Right. But I, that's where, hey, it, it, it's a fine line of wait, that was crazy. That endangered people. OK, but yeah, he's a young kid who really wasn't, you know, it's not malice. It's not like he's doing something to hurt people, right? And that's where it's it's a tough situation, to your point there. It really is. And that's where, yeah, I think the NFL has to be delicate in sending a strong message to go, hey, you're lucky. We don't want this going on anymore. But I don't want the kid's life ruined over this either. And that's that's where they got to find the fine line here. And, you know, Pete asked the question of whether or not the Henry Ruggs case will be a factor in all of this. The reality for him is the NFL never had to do anything because because was he so was obvious. driving right. yeah. ridiculously fast and right. did kill somebody right. in, a, in a horrible way. The young lady burned to death. Her dog burned to death in that accident that Henry Ruggs caused. He's incarcerated. It's not relevant to the NFL. The NFL never had to bang a gavel and say you're suspended a season or two seasons or three seasons or whatever. So uh, with Rice, that's going to be something. And and it gets back to what we were talking about. You know, even though he wasn't in Kansas City, you're still a member of a community wherever you are. And I think the NFL would want its players Went to, to be school responsible at SMU. members of whatever community they are in. Right. And driving that way, even if you're completely sober, driving that way under those circumstances, racing, treating it like it's the latest need for speed video game. I, th that, that is the kind of thing that requires a significant punishment because that, that is one of the ways that you get the message across. And we've seen, you know, there's been su suggestion lately that the personal conduct policy isn't working, which is just a load of shit, frankly. The personal conduct policy works. We don't have to deal with these issues all the time now. Guys aren't getting arrested. Guys aren't getting in trouble like they used to. Definitely it was 2007, not. as beefed up dramatically by 2014 with Ray Rice, Greg Hardy, Adrian Peterson. That trifecta to start the season caused the NFL to crank it up even more. This whole concept of paid leave is hanging over every player. Guys are not getting in trouble like they used to. So when something like this happens, that's when the self-styled enforcer needs to kick into gear and do something about it. And again, we're not, I mean, it's, it's unfortunate for Rasheed Rice, but there's a lesson here that others need to learn. And they're not going to learn it if they, if they give Rice a pass, if they go easy on him because he admitted to it. The NFL, I think, still needs to be somewhat harsh with him because he could have killed somebody very easily. And he's lucky, and they're lucky, that he didn't. Yeah, I, I agreed there. Agreed. And they're, they're going to have to figure that out. Uh, either way, Rasheed Rice made the right, right choice, admitting wrong, go from there try to get this going and get it done with as quick as possible. Don't make it a big issue or, or more of a distraction than it needs to be for the NFL or the Chiefs. All right, uh, let's take a break. When we return, we'll, I'm, I'm, I'm doing this for Pete. He wrote the tease. Will Russell Wilson eclipse his expectations this season? Uh -ha. I see what a you did solar there. Eclipse <laughs> edition of something coming up here on PFT Live. We'll be right back.
Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.